Okay, we're assuming here that you have Visual Studio, and in particular that you have certain components installed in Visual Studio. If you go to the Visual Studio installer, you can see what you have. Click on the Modify button, and then you want to make sure that you have the .NET Desktop Development installed and you also want to make sure that you have data storage and processing installed. Now we're within Visual Studio itself and you want to check under extensions, manage extensions, we want to look at the installed extensions and we want to make sure that we have this one, SQL Server Integration Services Projects. If you don't have that installed you can find it by going online here and if you type in integration you'll see it right here. This is the one that you want to make sure you install. Let's create our integration services project. Again, we're going to search for integration. And here we are, integration services project. We don't want the Azure enabled one. We want one that's local. Click Next. And we're going to call this SSIS and QuickBase. Create. Before we go any further, you're going to want to make sure that you've gone to the QNEC.com homepage, that you've downloaded QNEC.com and run the installer, and that you've watched this Getting Started video and configured your DSNs with usernames, passwords, and the QuickBase server and that you've pressed the test connection button to verify that all that information is correct. So I'm assuming you've done that. And now we're going to go back to Visual Studio. Now that we have QNECT ODBC for QuickBase installed and configured, we're going to create a connection here under Connection Managers. We're going to right click, choose New Connection. We're going to scroll down to ODBC, click Add, click New, and then we're going to find the DSN that we created. Here it is, QuickBase via QNECT. We want to make sure to choose this one. This one is a user DSN. We want to use a system DSN. That's this one. And then we go here and we click Use Connection String. We click Build. Then we click OK. We get this prompt. We click OK here again. And now we have the connection string. We're going to control A so that we can select the whole thing and then we're going to copy it. Now we're going to open up Notepad and paste that connection string here. When you created your DSNs, I'm assuming that you used a user token instead of a password. This connection string reflects that based on this particular setting. PWD is password is set to zero. Switching over to your browser and going to a QuickBase page, you can click in the upper right here and click on Manage Preferences and then scroll down a little bit to Manage My User Tokens. And here you can find your user token. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. Now we're going to go back to Notepad and we're going to paste that at the very end of the connection string. We've added semicolon, we've added PWD equals, and now we're going to paste in the user token. That completes our connection string. Now we're going to select all here. We're going to copy this. And now we're going to go back to Visual Studio. Back here in Visual Studio, we're going to press the test connection button just to make sure everything is working properly and we get a nice success message. Now the problem is that when you store a password, or in this case the password is actually a user token, it's stored here and not in the connection string and it's actually encrypted by SSIS using your user key. And if you try to run the resulting package that SSIS creates under a different Windows user, the password won't be accessible and the job will fail. So what we're going to do now is get around that 
and store the password in a place that it will always be accessible. So I'm going to click OK, click OK, and cancel here. And here's our connection. I'm going to rename it. QuickBase. We're going to use variables to do that. Variables are accessible by clicking on this little icon here. And then you click here to add a variable. The default name is variable, but I'm going to change that to QDB connection string. And this is going to be of type string. And then we come here to value and we paste what we have on the clipboard from Notepad. That completes the creation of our variable. Now that we've got a variable, we want to use it here in our connection. So I'm going to right click and the pop up menu all the way at the bottom, you can't quite see it, is the properties choice. You choose that and that opens up this properties window here. And you want to make sure that it says QuickBase connection here at the top. Then you want to go and expand expressions, click on the triple dots. Here you want to choose connection string, and then the expression is where you're going to type at sign, left square bracket, user, colon, colon, and then the name of our variable, qdb connection string close square bracket. To make sure it's working, we click here on connection string, we click the triple dots, and then we click evaluate expression. And as you can see, our connection string appears here, indicating that we have properly configured everything. We click OK, click OK, and now we have our connection string connected up to our connection manager via this variable here. Now we're going to create a connection to SQL Server. We right click in the connection managers pane and we choose new OLADB connection. We click new, then we choose the server. We're going to use SQL Server authentication with a username of SSIS and a password. Then we're going to choose our database. Then we click Test Connection to make sure everything's working. Then we click OK. Now these property value pairs are very important. We're going to want to create a connection string based on this. So we're going to bring up Notepad and we're going to go to a new line and then we're going to copy these values. So we want data source. What we end up with is the property followed by an equal sign and then the value. Then a semicolon and then we start again with the next property, an equal sign, then we put in the value and a semicolon. We do that for all the properties that are listed. What's going to be missing is the password, so we want to add that at the end. We put the last semicolon in, we put in the word password, that's the property, the equal sign, and then the password. So this is our connection string for SQL Server. So I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. Back in Visual Studio, we can click OK. And here is our connection to SQL Server. Now we're going to do the same thing with variables that we did for QuickBase. We're going to click on the variable icon up here. And then we are going to click on Add a Variable. And we're going to call this one SQL Connection String. And again, we have to set this property to String. And then in the value, we're going to paste in the connection string from Notepad that we just created. Once we have this variable created, we want to go here and click on Properties. Again, that's the last choice in this pop-up menu that you don't see. 
and we want to be sure that we have the connection here in the top of the properties uh, window and we want to go to expressions click on the three dots here we want to choose connection string and then the expression is very similar to what we had before it's at sign left square bracket user colon colon sql connection string uh, closing square bracket then we click over here we click on the three dots and then we click evaluate expression and we see that indeed we have everything configured properly the connection string shows up there then we click ok here and we've now connected our variable to our connection. Now we want to take a look at the Solution Explorer, View Solution Explorer. And we want to set a property of the solution. This property is the protection level. We want to set that so that we do not save sensitive data. And then we want to do the same thing at the package level. We want to click here on this canvas so that we deselect the connection managers. Then we go over here, select properties, and we get this short list of properties here. To get the complete list, we go back here and click open. And now we can see that the package is up here. And we scroll through this list until we find the property that allows us to set protection level and we set it to don't save sensitive. So we've set the property of the package protection level to don't save sens sensitive and we've done the same thing for the overall project as well. To run SSIS packages we need something called DT exec. The best way to find out if that's installed on the system where you plan to run these packages is to click on start and type CMD. That will bring up a command window. Here you can type where dtexec and this will show you all the different versions of dtexec that you have installed on your system. The thing to note here is that you've got program files that means 64-bit version of dtexec. When it says program files x86 that means a 32-bit version of dtexec. So here I have version 11, I have version 13, version 11 again, but this is the 32-bit version. I've got a 32-bit version of uh, DT exec that's version 12, and I've also got a 64-bit of 12. So I've got 12 in 32 and 64-bit, I've got 11 in 64-bit uh, and 32-bit, and I've got 13. So the highest version of DTEXE C that I have is version 13. So that's the version I'm going to try to use. Now here's a handy table that lets you figure out what version of SQL Server that corresponds to. Version 13 of DTE Exec corresponds to SQL Server version 2016. Back here in SQL Server we can go to the Solution Explorer and right click on the project, choose Properties, and then click on Configuration Properties. And here we have the target server version. We want to set this to SQL Server 2016 based on the DT exec version. We click OK and then we get this dialog here and we're going to make the change. And we want to reload the project now. Now we're going to want to save all our changes. File, save all. And then we're going to shut down SQL Server and open it back up again. Now we're going to open up the package and start to work with it. We're going to plunk a data flow task onto the canvas here, onto the control flow canvas. And we're going to label it SQL Server to Quick Base. Now that we have our control flow task, we want to go to the data flow canvas and specify what's in that data flow task. So here we have the data flow task SQL Server to Quick Base and we have a canvas here that we can start populating. So we go over here and we scroll down to OLEDB source and we drag that and drop that here. Now 
we're going to rename this and just call it SQL Server. That's where the data is coming from. We right click and choose Edit and here we can specify the table where our data is coming from. We're going to choose the customer table. Now that we have our source, we want to create a destination. We're going to find the ODBC destination and drag that onto the canvas. Then we're going to connect our source to our destination. Now we're going to edit the destination. It's chosen the connection manager for us because it's the only appropriate one. And then we're going to choose the table that we're going to send the data into. We're going to choose customers. Then we're going to click on mappings here. Everything is mapped for us because the field names of our source match the field names of our destination. Now let's build our project. We click on the build menu, build solution, and we have success. Now we want to create a batch file to run our package. Back here at the command prompt, we want to select the command line for the DT exec of the version that's most recent, in this case, version 13. And we want to have the 32-bit version as well. Copy that to the clipboard. And now we'll go to Notepad. Starting with a fresh Notepad, we're going to paste that in. And we have to surround this in quotes because there's spaces in this path. Then we want to put forward slash F and then we want the path to our package file. Right now the package file lives in our repository. That's probably not the final resting place but, but we'll assume that it stays here for the moment. I'm going to look here at the properties which tells us exactly what the path is to our package and we can copy that to the clipboard. Going back to Notepad, we want to paste that in between quotes like this. And then we want to add a backslash and the name of our package, which is just package.dtsx. So now we have a batch file that will run our package. And we're going to save as or save. We're going to do all files. And we'll put it alongside in the repository. And we'll call it package.bat. Now you can use Windows Task Scheduler to schedule your task. I'm going to click on Create a Basic Task. I'm going to give it a name. I'll run it daily. The action is start a program. And now we browse and we go to our repository and we choose the batch file we created. And then we click open. And we're done.